Hello, it's evening here in Venice in the middle of summer, and I am here to tell you about Lucrezia Maranella Vaca. I am in the Campo dei Squellini. The word squellini is kind of strange. It refers to little bowls that were made near here. Um, and uh, it's really a quiet campo, a little cafe behind me, a, a little fountain, um, and people just sort of wander past. There's not too much going on. But this was one of the homes of Lucrezia Maranella Vaca. And she lived from the late 1500s to about the mid 1600s. In fact, she lived to be in her 70s. And uh, she was a writer, one of the early, what we sort of call proto feminist writers, because she was writing about feminist ideas long before feminism was even an idea. Uh, and um, she was the beneficiary of the humanist movement. Her father was a doctor, as was her brother, and they believed that women should be educated. So she received a very good education when she was young, including the studies of the classic um, literature, rhetoric, philosophy, um, and Latin and other languages. And then she put that to work as a writer. So she first was moved to write um, uh, some sacred works, and she wrote, uh, I've got a few notes here, she wrote about the lives of Saint Columba, Saint Francis, Santa Justina, and Santa Catarina, um, and some other works about the Virgin Mary. Um, but then she was moved to write uh, a piece that was in response to a polemic by a guy named Giuseppe Passi. He wrote this, this tract about the defects of women. And Lucrezia Maranella was so upset by this that she thought she needed to write a response. Um, and she, she put all her best rhetorical um, skills to, to practice here in writing her response. Quite a long piece. Um, she wrote about women should have a role in the military, about women being educated, about women's equality with men. Um, one particular argument I really liked, um, she re referenced the Bible quite a bit. And she talked about um, how Adam was created from the earth and Eve was created from Adam's rib. So if Adam is already um, a sentient being with a soul, then that is superior material with which to create woman. So women are superior. This is how she reasoned it. Um, and the, the piece is just full of stuff like this. She really had a great mind. Um, a lot of anger, though, and bitterness comes across, I think, too. Um, as she makes her arguments. She did go on to write a piece called en Enrico, or Byzantium Conquered. Um, of course, I'm giving you the translations. She wrote it all in Italian. And um, this was one of those pieces like um, uh, Orlando Furioso, where it's sort of a romantic epic. But the difference was, in her epic, the heroes were women. There was a, a woman warrior, leader, named Meandra, and she led people into battle, um, men and women. And then there's a character named Claudia, who is an archer, who can shoot and kill just about anybody she shoots her points or arrow at. Um, so these were sort of the key characters. And at this time, um, works like this were pretty popular, but they always featured men as heroes. So it was quite unusual that she wrote something like this um, I know there are a couple of other writers at this time, one of them being a Venetian named Modesto Pozzo, um, but really it's pretty unusual writing something like this. Um, and then later in her life, uh, she wrote a piece called Exhortations to Women and Others. And her tone really changed in this piece. Um, she, she sort of tells women, if you're a writer, this is how you're going to be treated. And then she catalogs all the terrible ways that uh, women were treated, and I assume that those are often the ways she was treated as a writer. Um, so there's quite a bit of bitterness. She seems to recant some of her earlier ideas. She seems to be trying to convince women to not become writers. And uh, you get the idea that she had kind of a difficult life because she decided to speak out and write um, about these women's issues and women's equality. Uh, so quite an interesting person, um, a fairly prolific writer, especially for her time period. Uh, she's buried, apparently, at the church of San Pantalon, which is not too far from here. So I've heard that the church has kind of lost the records of that. Um,
but uh, she, she was um, in the higher echelons of society and would have stayed home most of the time. So this campo here was the view that she enjoyed for much of her life. Um, she did marry also. She married a doctor. And um, it appears that the two of them chose to not have children. Uh, we don't have any proof of that, but, um, but she does make some allusions to this in some of her writing. And uh, it sounds like she and her husband had quite uh, a relationship of equality and giving each other the space they needed. So um, really interesting person from this time. And uh, this is one of the places she lived in Venice. There's the sign for the Campo dei Squellini.